Hey folks, David Fine here from Keys Mods, guys. Uh, it is Moth Week, and we are in set in the Florida Keys in North Key Largo, guys. And um, we have other videos where we're showing you how we are have our light rig set up with our generators and our big lights. But guys, this is actually only a 15 watt black light, and this thing is a five gallon bucket with this is a black light trap, guys. And we're going to show you a little bit about the black light trap. I'm being illuminated by uh, my truck headlights. Guys, I just set this up. Let me show you how this thing works. Okay, it's it's set up by a, a little little car battery here. I've got alligator clips, and this, it runs, it hooks up to a ballast. And inside of these things, you can see all the bugs that are already starting to go into this trap, guys. Uh, these things really, really do a good job. I've actually had this trap, I actually have five of them, um, I've had these five traps for about 23, 24 years. They've gone through a lot. Okay, and so now, actually here comes the first moth. The first moth to the bucket trap. Well, it might be attracted to my headlamp. Okay, I'm gonna turn my headlamp off so that I can, hopefully go, the moth goes into the bucket. Guys, <clears throat> what happens is, much like the mercury vapor lights, the moth will see this little black light, 15 watt black light, and it'll it'll be attracted to the light. It'll spin around and around, and eventually, the moth will hit one of these veins. And when it hits the vein, it, it'll fall down, and then there's a funnel right here. It slides down the funnel into the trap, and I've got some ethyl acetate uh, cans with wicks on the bottom. And that's uh, our killing agent, and it knocks them out pretty quick. But guys, this is one of the best ways to survey moths because uh, these these traps collect all night long. Whereas, you know, Ricky and I, there's my buddy Ricky. <laughs> Ricky and I will collect our hearts out, and we'll we'll be up. But eventually, we get tired and we'll t need to shut our eyes for a little bit. Yeah. These things just keep going. Yep. Ricky, does that sound good to you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so we've actually got five of these things that we're going to set up. Um, let, let me show you guys a little bit about why I chose this particular spot. First of all, it's a path, a pathway here that goes through the hammock. We got hammock on both sides and I've got this thing right off to the side, but right here, guys, this whole little field right here is, is a whole little side of a hill that's loaded with grapevine. These are all grapevine. This is all um, uh, muscadine grape and cissus grape. And and guys, grapevine is a, is a host plant for some of the coolest sphinx moths around. So we've got the, the gaudy sphinx, the vine sphinx. Uh, we've got morning sphinx that will feed on the grape. Uh, there, there's a there's a, two or three other species that will use grapevine as a host plant. So what I'm doing is Literally right across the path, we've got our trap right over there. And so hopefully, if there's any sphinx moths on the wing uh, and they're emerging from this little area of host plant over here, they'll see that light, go over towards it, and be captured. So guys, light trap placement is super important. What I want to show you guys, um, I'm not going to set it up quite. I'm going to set it up in a minute, but what I want to show you guys Right up here, oh, there's a spider. Look at this spider. Oh, guys. Oh, I don't like spiders. But I will show one to you on video. It's like a phobia of mine to walk into one of these things. Ugh, creepy. All right, so guys, this is the grapevine I was telling you about. All this stuff right here is muscadine grape. And it's a host larval host plant for several sphinx moths. And so we've got some amazing sphinx moths down here, guys. But what I'm going to show you right over here, <clears throat> there is a stand. This whole thing right here, it, even though it's kind of covered by grapevines, this right here, this plant, is actually pond apple. So this pond apple right here, this this plant right right here, guys, it's in the Anona family, and so uh, the Anonas are host plants for 
the giant sphinx. Guys, the largest sphinx moth uh, in, in North America for sure uh, feeds on this. Plus, there's some little noctuids called gonadonna species, gonadonna nutrix and gonadonna bidens. They both feed on, I believe, on a nona species and a probably, uh, I've caught them right here in this little path. So what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna set up another light trap, probably right across the path, right here in this little clearing right here, because we look right across the path and there's, <coughs> <coughs> there's all the host plant right there guys. So I'm gonna try and see if we can set that up um, I'm hoping that in the morning when we check our light traps that I'll be able to show you guys some really cool uh, moths that we found in our light traps. And so uh, light trap placement is very important. And so you have to think about host plants. It's not just blind, guys. We're not, when you're setting up um, a host plant, uh, light traps, you're not just blindly setting up a light trap, you know, somewhere just, oh, maybe this is a good spot. No, it's very strategic. So you wanna try and find flight patterns, flight paths. Um, you wanna try and find host plants. You wanna target certain species and you wanna try and give yourself the best chance possible to put yourself, put your light traps in the, oh, there's a big, almost walked into that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you wanna give yourself the best chance possible to put your light trap in the location where, uh, where we have lots of host plants. So guys, uh, that's light trap placement 101. Uh, Ricky, we're going to set these guys up. I showed you how one is set up. You see something? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to set these guys up. We're going to set these light traps up. We've got plenty of videos coming out. And in the morning, we are going to go hunt them down and show you what's in all the light traps. Ooh, so we're retrieving go. our bucket light traps. And I want to show you how to kind of like how I've, a system that I've developed to, to heart, like wrap up your bait trap and take care of your harvest and then move to a less buggy location to sift through the bottom of your trap. So uh, guys, we're gonna do that now. Okay. We got a wish moth. Whoa. Oh, that one's gone. He's gone. But we got a nice wish moth. Oh, there's a witch moth in there, huh? Yeah. Guys, these little 15 watt black lights, the, it, you'd be surprised at all the stuff that comes and the activity that surrounds these little light traps. And so, um, you know, we spend all night harvesting at the at the light sheets, but guys, there's all kinds of things. They, I'm just looking at stuff that's just kind of like right on the rim. There's a big old witch moth. Let me see if I can. Oh, he's inside. He went inside? <laughs> well, he came out. And he's a little boy. He's a little guy. Well, you see how little it is? Yeah, it's little for a black witch. It's very tiny. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's going to get out. He's, he loves the bulb. Come here, boy. Well, he does love the bulb. All right, now he loves your finger, Rick. Well, that's a goes. little tiny one. He's I a little guy, see, yeah. I never seen one that's small. A black wow. witch, guys. Ascalafa odorata. Very common here down in South Florida. Actually, this guy's neat. He's got these little black lines here. Hmm, yeah. That's actually a, a, a different pattern than I'm used to seeing. Uh, so, yeah, I might, that might be one to keep. It's a different pattern than I've seen. See it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, guys, these little batteries, in fact, this isn't so little. He's gone. He's gone. He flew. Well, Black witch flew. Bye-bye. There he goes. There he goes. All right. So, guys, this battery here is a um 12 volt battery agm uh i think it doesn't need to be uh it doesn't really need to be as big as this in fact uh a lot of my batteries are starting to go bad after like five or six years of use so i'm actually going to look into getting some of the smaller like lithium stuff yes sir yeah it'd be a lot a lot smaller a lot lighter these things are heavy and so um guys i'm just going to unplug this these guys, the good thing about these is they can last me two full nights of light trapping with a, with a bucket. So if you have a battery and it's still good, these 12 volt batteries can last two full nights without having to recharge. So it's good. Now, what we're going to do is because I'm old and uh, <laughs> I, instead of bending down to do everything, 
I've got a pickup truck for a reason. And ay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. ay. <laughs> okay, this battery's still good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it is good. That thing had some juice, man. That thing had some juice. Bring it. All right, let's hope that this trap is better than the first one. I can smell the acetone from uh, the, uh, yeah. the poison from here, so it should be way better. Sounds beautiful. All right, so what, what's the best thing we've seen so far? My space smell. I love Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> so you got the Black Witch. The Black Witch is cool. So we've got so far we've got Ella Sphinx. Uh, it's Moth yeah. Week, by the way. Ella Sphinx. We've got Groats Sphinx, and we've got a Black Witch Moth, and a couple other little guys. So, yep. um, guys, more action to come from Keys Moths. Hope you enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs up, Ricky. Thumbs up is good. Till next don't time. Don't forget to leave that that little thumbs up. It's free, completely free, and help us a lot. Yes, yes, Please. yes. Help grow our channel, guys. If you enjoy our content, we're gonna try and. Uh, crank out some butterfly moth science for you guys. Till next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.